NXT, April 2020. The next big thing seemingly arrived. Under Triple H's watchful eye, Killer Cross was rebranded the considerably less cool Carrier Cross and brought in with a monster push. With Scarlet Bordeaux in tow now missing her surname, Cross was afforded an incredibly over the top entrance and presentation style that just really didn't match the often slow burning MMA shooter style he was working in the ring. A horribly timed shoulder injury wasn't enough to derail the NXT vision for Cross, who wound up dominating the show as a two time champion. And then the cracks in the push started to show. Adam Cole, before it turned out he was made of glass, completely roasted and owned Cross on the mic. You know what they do to make Adam Cole feel special? They ring the freaking bell. The promo, while entertaining, ultimately hurt and exposed Cross on the show and left fans questioning just how far he'd really go come main roster time. Yeah, so the answer to that question was uh, not fair. Not fair at all. Under Vince McMahon's near blind eye, Cross was reborn as a gormless chump in bondage gear, eating pins and getting little to no space to develop his character. Worst of all, Scarlet was kept completely hidden. His debut match, as an undefeated champ over on NXT no less, saw him lose to Jeff Hardy in less than two minutes, good grief. His post-match promo, where he still tried to talk tough, just seemed hilariously tone deaf and delusional after what everyone had just seen transpire. Unsurprisingly, this blatant burial was not well received, with even WWE legends like Booker T and Mick Foley dissing the horrible booking of someone NXT had built up to actually be a someone. Cut from the roster, Cross's run from blue chipper to pink slipper made him a bit of a joke. It appeared he'd been the victim of war games. War games! Between Triple H and Vince McMahon, with the old timer coming out on top, at least for a little while. Despite seemingly fitting many of McMahon's preferences, such as a jacked physique and a colorful persona, Cross was utterly humiliated on the main roster, making the NXT roster he dominated look beyond lame in the process as well. Fast forward to now, and his comeback run now that Triple H is in charge has seen him toiling in the mid-card, largely meandering after a brief push opposite Drew McIntyre back in 2022. Cross has endured the Bray Wyatt treatment, a spooky menace who picks a fight with someone and then loses to them, and then probably loses to them some more while he's at it. And this year's reinvention hasn't been a saving grace, with his little team up with the Authors of Pain just leading to more defeat. And now an incredibly awkward finisher as well. I mean, seriously, someone banned the pump handle. There's no point to it. So was Cross just an overhyped chump? Or was Triple H right in initially seeing big star potential in him? Well, the answer is somewhere in between. Lucha Underground has left the guy typecast as a horror movie, occultic, esoteric kind of bad guy. But does that fit him? You see, the general silence of crowds would suggest no. No, it does not. In fact, Carrion Cross would benefit immensely right now from a less is more approach. Most of his offense revolves around MMA. He looks like a tough guy. His wife slash manager is hot. Let's just call it how it is. Turning him into simply a deadly fighter with a charismatic wife doing the talking for him would probably get more heat and interest than trying to be some kind of dark magic edgelord, Buffy the Vampire Slayer reject character. His brief run in TNA, or Impact as it was called at the time, did show this, where he excelled as a sadistic mercenary kind of character. This persona, as a double act with Scarlet, would likely have held more appeal to both casuals and diehards alike. A dangerous assassin and a glamorous heel sticking together in cahoots, causing chaos. Easy sell, straightforward. Nothing silly, no nonsense. But nope. 
No, no. As it stands now, regardless of what reinvention Cross goes through next, the fact is, there's been way too many reinventions. Regardless of his talents, or lack thereof, the genie is likely out of the bottle for good. And a guy who could have been at least an upper mid-card act is now very much just Ruster Fudder.